Hello everyone, Ultimate Steve here. Welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program Hardcore Mode. So now, uh, we're going to do na. <laughs> okay, uh, this is this is the Risk Twelve. I should probably start giving these actual distinct names, uh, but it's it's a kind of asparagus stage, lower stage. Well, is it really asparagus if you only have two? Uh, I want one to have drop boosters. But anyway, the the they should be feeding their fuel into the middle tank here. And uh, this is an Apollo-style lander. We've got the orbiter module. We've got the uh, lander inside there. It's kind of wide, but believe it or not, it used to be wider. I actually haven't tested anything on it, so I'm kind of nervous because this this could be the end of uh, the series right here. Uh, I did add a launch escape system just in case, though. I forgot to make an action group to jettison it, so I will have to do that once we get high enough. I kind of want to press it just to make sure, just to see what would happen, but I cannot afford another one of these vehicles. And this student mission is not going to be very lucrative because the contracts just didn't show up. Uh, but World First Awards should give us a reasonable amount of stuff. And we are about 10, 20 seconds away from dumping off the boosters, which I forgot Cephatrons again. Isn't that fun? But we should be going fast enough with the sustainer. The sustainer stage should be able to get us most of the way, most of the rest of the way into orbit. 170 fuel left in there. We've got, so I'm going to time accelerate just a little bit, but not too much. 30, 20, 10, jettison. Okay, Ooh, okay, we did well. It didn't, it didn't. Is there a, my roommate's saying there's a spider, hold on. Okay, ah, I, this chair <laughs> No spider, okay, we're good. Uh, I would not not that I would have done anything about this spider, I would have probably screamed, uh, out of the three rooms, out of the four people who live in this, in this, uh, apartment, uh, I'm probably the most likely to scream at a spider. <laughs> and there we go, it's, it's a Beyblade in space. <laughs> Imagine if that had come back to hit us and killed us. <laughs> okay. Um... Okay, so we're successfully in orbit. The idea is that this stage will get us most of the way to, uh, what, what should we call it? This, this stage should get us into load in orbit or very close to it. Probably only very close to it. Upon which time I'll switch to the uh, service module stuff. Uh, and I launched added transfer window, so it should be fairly straightforward uh, to get there. Uh, I will come back with you when I'm approaching Duna. <laughs> Okay, so we're at uh, Duna. I almost accidentally ta time warp past our periaps, but this should be finally space low, and I accidentally uh, uh, deleted one of the mystery goos, because uh, I thought I was space low, I just didn't think to check the actual experiments to confirm that I was space low. Uh, and also I'm going EVA uh, to, to do it instead of pressing collect all. To, um, to try and get myself into the habit of doing that so I don't accidentally uh, stack the, uh, the whatchamacallits, the, the samples, when they when it comes time for me to grab the samples. Take data, EVA report, let's store all those. Oh, okay, what, what do I don't have, what do I not have? Uh, it doesn't matter, I don't care, uh, but because it's time to burn retrograde. <laughs> probably too late to burn retrograde actually but um, it'll work out we have more fuel than we anticipated having we can also like gravity assist places because like 
That's that's a really good ejection gravity assist that we can get at some point if we need it. I just never played with that stuff before because I've never had to. Let's go for a 55 kilometer orbit. I'm going to go back to normal time warps so that I'm used to it. Because if you don't know, I have a better time warp mod installed. It was originally for Solar Station. It was just... I'm, it's really convenient <laughs> to be able to time warp faster sometimes. 52 by 55, that is close enough to circular for my purposes. So now, what am I going to do? Um... So first of all, we need to deploy this fair in order to progress any further. I'm gonna... Part of me wants to save this fuel for something else. However, I just realized now, completely by accident, that I can use it to actually deorbit my ship. Uh, so I'm gonna get out. And I can uh, sort of do like how the Soviet moon landing uh, is is what was gonna be done. Like I actually just watched the Beardy Penguin stream of landing uh, the... the, the uh, the, 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 the LK with the N1 for, for all Kerbal Kind, that's an excellent series, you should go check it out. Uh, so I guess this is partially accidentally inspired by that, just subconsciously. So I'm gonna undock that, and I'm gonna gently pull away with RCS. And then here is the moment that makes or breaks this entire, there's gonna be a lot of moments that break or make or break this entire save. I'm not that too far in, so I'm not that uh, disappointed if I fail um, season two. <laughs> uh, but I haven't, I haven't tested this lander. I really should have tested the lander. Actually, before we go down to the surface, I am going to test it. Uh, like I am gonna make sure I can make it down and up this lander. Actually, well, I don't even need to because I can just EVA on doing it. Like, can I get through this gap though? I cannot. So good, good to know. I cannot do that, so I shouldn't even have brought this ladder. Uh, but good, good, good for future reference. Just double check ladders. Like it's not going to kill us this time, but later on it might. Also, by the way, these uh, these basic fins are not for aerodynamics. That they're for they're so I had a place to auto strut from. Uh, okay. Where should I land? I want to try and land in a crater. So like I can get the the parachute like I can get better parachute breaking. Or in a basin. I think that's a basin right that this whole big basin in the middle right here uh, would be a very good place for me to land. I have three hundred meters per second in the tanks. That should be enough to get into the basin if I start right here. Anyway, without further ado, quick saving as if it'll do anything. <laughs> Let's land on Duna. Alright, me. Go me. I almost said Jeb again. I keep almost saying Jeb. Here goes. So I just actually checked the first video to see what I have to do in case I lose, because the top upload comment is uh, what I do if I lose. But the top upload comment is actually that I should have one autonomous craft for the entire save, like so I can make one saving throw. Uh, the top one that actually suggests uh, something to do are I need to land on and return from Mindo in Weak World Planet Jam, which I was already planning on doing. Uh, okay, the, there, there's I stink right. There's one tied for that, which says I need to eat a lemon with yogurt. Sure, uh, and I was already planning on d returning from everywhere in Weak World Planet Jam, but I haven't actually discovered Mindo yet, so I don't know what it is. Hopefully, it's not too terribly bad. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I'm in the atmosphere now. Inject the fairing eject the stage and I'm gonna put this decoupler's like uh why can't I do that why is it grayed out uh that's weird I suddenly find myself unable to redo staging in flight there we are okay it was just a random issue I'm gonna add a bunch of stages before the decouplers so I don't accidentally trigger the decouplers and I'm gonna preemptively Turn up the minimum pressure and altitude on these drogues. Wait, no. Turn down minimum pressure. Because that's... I need... Okay. Yeah, okay. And then these two. Because uh, doing a... You know, the atmosphere is so thin. Min pressure, altitude, all the way down and up. 
And without further ado, let's go. So this is a two-stage sort of design. Like we've got these outer drop tanks sort of, and the middle core, which just has an FLT-200 tank. We're also gonna take to Ike. Uh, so it's gonna be one lander for two places, I think. I actually, do I have enough Delta V to do Ike on the last stage? Only if I refuel the mothership. All right, let's get those drogue shoots out. Hold on, my roommates are... Okay, I think they're done. Nope, they're not. Okay, my roommates are done swearing in the background. Let's continue on. Uh, five kilometers from the surface. Uh, I'm... Come on, shoots deploy. Okay, drogues are out. And we are aerodynamically stable backwards. My, that was my biggest fear, that we wouldn't be aerodynamically stable backwards. I'm gonna deploy the shoots. Oh, hey, there goes our other stage. Here, yeah, um... And actually, we can probably survive this speed right now, as is landing. Uh, now I just have to follow three kilometers, which I guess I was being a little bit too cautious. Uh, but yeah, I, I'd much rather have to fall three kilometers than die right here. Oh, I just remembered. I have to do science in the atmosphere, too. So I'm going to quickly do that. All right, we are 300 meters above the surface of Duna, descending rapidly. Uh, and we just need to fire the engines for a fraction of a second to successfully land this thing. I'm going to test it up here. Okay, we, we're at good thrust to weight ratio. And about right now. And there we are. Touchdown on the surface of Duna. Good job, me. Uh, and I can go walk on the surface now. That was slightly less awkward than the uh, than the last and then that gilly lander <laughs> gilly gilly touchdown no i just pressed remove helmet instead of plant flag imagine if it actually removed helmet when you clicked removed helmet then i'd just have died the series would have ended right there okay so now let's get this service sample that we came all this way for and i'm going to put it in the second sample container so that i don't accidentally mix them up now, from here on out, doing EVA to collect all the science uh, is going to be paramount. Because if I press collect all, I think that merges everything. Uh, unless... What if I take another service sample from Duna? Service sample from Duna's Midland Sea. Store experiment. Okay, I can't. So, thing is, since I know that these don't stack, what if I just ditch the sample uh, and I try to collect all? Collect all. Fantastic. The service sample in here does not move, so I've accidentally uh, made a really good design. So as long as I collect two service samples from every space, they physically can't stack, which is really good news. So now, we just gotta get back to orbit. Uh, I time warp too far. And hopefully this thing is aerodynamically stable, because it might not be knowing me. Duna, I find is weird, because there's enough atmosphere that you can't rely on it, but there's too much atmosphere to ignore. So, anyway, three, two, one, let's go. And I need to keep an eye on this fuel tank so I can jettison them when they're empty. Because there's no, like, engines there. I have to click it automatically. I have to be looking at it. Oh boy, here goes. So first of all, I, uh, I stopped burning way too late. Uh, second of all, I had the thought, first of all, that I need landing legs for Ike, but I actually don't, because I have two reaction wheels near. I can write myself up if I fall down. Uh, so I actually am gonna adjust on these. I thought I might not for a second, because I have these for a suspiciously long time. Like, I didn't think I'd have these drop tanks still on at this point. But anyway, we're on, we're on the fuel knees. Let's separate them. There we are. And now we just have the last stage of the lander.
And there we go. I just realized I completely forgot to grab all of the upper atmosphere science. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to dip back into the upper atmosphere real quick. That's a really cool sunrise. Because I've got Ike and the sun just right there. All right, let's go to Ike, and let's hope the rule is the same as the Mun, because I honestly don't remember, and I don't want to maneuver note it. Close enough to over the horizon, close enough to the Mun rule, and close enough to Ike. <laughs> 